couple of cool springs. It's Matt Martin, your pastor, uh, here to share with you a little bit about day three of 30 days of prayer. I'm so thankful that you have been praying now for two days, and now the third day, I want to encourage you to continue on this journey uh, to pray with us here at Cool Springs uh, for revival, for revival in our nation, revival in your family, revival in our church, uh, that God would really do a great work in this time. And we know that it begins with prayer. And so here in day three, uh, the scripture as we continue through uh, John uh, 17, still in John 17, 1, Jesus there before the Father, he prays, the hour has come. The hour has come. Now, what does he mean by that? He's not talking about a specific uh, time and event uh, that, that God has or a specific time, uh, like an hour, like uh, the, the three o'clock hour or the four o'clock hour. He's talking about a certain opportunity, God's opportune hour in the life of Christ, where God wants to do something in the life of Christ, through the life of Christ, uh, that has to do with his plan for him and for all of mankind. Specifically, he's talking about when he says the hour has come, meaning the fact that he's about to be arrested. He's about to go to the cross. He's about to, to uh, experience the resurrection and then glorification and ascension to the Father. And, and uh, that's that, that all that's going to take place in this opportune time for God's plan for salvation for all mankind, those that will come to him in faith. So when he says the hour has come, he's meaning uh, the hour for me to do what you have called me to do has come. The, the time for all the reason that I came to this planet, to earth, to do and lived a perfect life, all of that is about to take place. The hour has come for you to, to do what you want to do in and through uh, my life. That's what Christ is is saying. And if you read the devotion today, I really encourage you to do that because it's really a great uh, wartime story of Delos Miles. If you're familiar with Delos Miles, a great uh, denominational leader, a great pastor and preacher and theologian, but God, uh, uh, the devotion shares about how God worked in his life, how the hour had come in his life in a foxhole in World War II. Uh, so I encourage you to read that. But the question that I that I have for you, really, the author of the devotion says in the last sentence, it says, what hour of the Father's is it in your life? And how is the Father's hour influencing the way that you pray? So I want you to think about that as you think about the hour has come, as you mull that over in your heart and in your mind uh, to today to think about, has the hour come in your life? What is it that God's wanting to do in your life? Do you even care? Do you even seeking him about that? He wants to do a special work in and through your life and in the lives of those around, around you. Uh, God has a plan for your life and he wants to, to do something in and through your life for his glory. Has the hour come? Has the hour come? Do you even know what that is in your life? Are you seeking that? Are you praying for that. And how's that influencing your prayer life? Is that something that you're praying about even today? The prayer points for today are this. It says, Father, teach me to be sensitive to your hour as it relates to my life and prayers. The second prayer point, Lord, help our church understand the Father's hour and pray accordingly. Not only is there uh, the Father have an hour uh, for uh, you and your in your life, but he also does for our church, for Cool Springs. Are you praying that the hour would come uh, for Cool Springs, that we would be who God wants us to be and that God would use us for his glory? So as we pray today, would you remember those things as we think about the hour has come? Let's pray together. 